Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Get On With It, Alter Ego. By myself this time, I guess I'll have to fucking wing it. Hope you all enjoyed Griffin God in the last video. Uh, I've noted his channel before, uh, you know, right recently both with up uh, showing one of his videos on my channel, as well as, you know, linking his channel in the last video's video description. Since then I've noticed he's gotten quite a bit more viewers, which is good. He tries to thank me, but it's not my fault. So, last time we uh, covered childhood with Griffin God, and we are into the turbulent teenage years. As uh, always, I will be heading from bottom to top. This uh, gives me a semblance of order, and also allows you folks who are playing at home. Many of you have already completed lives, on multiple occasions, but you know folks to uh, play events that I myself have not played through over the course of this recording. As I said, we are teenager, 13 years old. <sighs> Spheres are pretty decent here, especially our physical skill. I mean, oh my god, it's improved since we got our fucking face bashed in. And of course, I must be intelligent. The social thing's a little iffy, but eh, what can you do? <laughs> and no surprises here. Um... The only thing that's surprising is my happiness fear is high. <laughs> calmness and gentleness, I think. I think if you traded out my uh, calmness and happiness, that would be... Uh, actually, you know, I'm not really that calm either. Maybe my gentleness and my happiness. I'm a pretty gentle guy, so long as you uh, <laughs> do not say something stupid. You'd be amazed at how many things I think are stupid. There are none of these experiences that you can do right now. Please try again later. So, yes... These all resemble different experiences that you could encounter as you get older. Uh, I think that has to do with school activities. I think this has to, like with studying and stuff. I think this has to do with social activities. I think that has to do with work and that has to do with leisure, vacation time. It's been, like what, I said five years since I played. Didn't really review my manual. Uh, I guess I'll stumble across those as I move on in the game. How about that, everyone? So shall we begin? I don't think I can, I can bother to do any of this. You are too young to take on the responsibilities of a job just yet. Concentrate on your schoolwork. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. Mr. Black is the most hated teacher in the entire school. He's an ex-Marine drill sergeant who teaches gym class. Recently, he made every guy in your entire class do 100 push-ups just because someone sneezed funny. A couple of the kids are planning to get back at him by slashing his tires. The plan is to meet outside after school. One person will watch, while the others will cut through the tires. No. <laughs> yeah, and that passed some time. I, I, I expected to get like a no thing, like, um... Here we go. Let's pretend that didn't happen, everyone. I don't feel like engaging in any sorts of events. Let's just go through the cards here. Tonight is Halloween. No, it's not. Some of your more fun-loving friends are going door-to-door. -door. Some of your more mischievous friends are going out to play pranks. You must decide on which group you would like to join. I like the fun-loving and go door-to-door. -door. You can... <laughs> Man, I'm about to spice this up. Griff, motherfucker. I, I stopped trick-or-treating long before 13 years old. Uh, one was due to neighborhood safeness. Uh, the other was due to, I guess, a loss of interest in it. Wasn't quite my thing anymore. I mean, candy's, candy's cool. You know, 13 years old. I think I still like to enjoy candy, but... Nah. So, uh... Anything I would do, actually, what something I have done before, which is on Halloween, uh, you know, the little, like, orange boxes? Yeah. You did a great job. You have collected $17. Do you... <laughs> Man. <laughs> Tempting. Perhaps if I, you know, if it were me, 23 years old now, I'd keep it, but no. Trustworthiness increases. You are charitable and honest. God damn it. I know. Jesus. Too nice of a guy. Too nice of a guy. You're in one of your ultra cool moods. <laughs> While cruising through the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and you let a swear word sneak out. Your mother calls you in from the other room. She says, Did you say what I thought you said? 
So, I can be too cool to care in my ultra cool mode. <laughs> no. 13 years old, we'll wait to say that until later. My mom, um... Mom always knew that I wanted to swear. I picked up the language whenever I was a kid by hearing all my mom and dad's friends swear. So I thought it was cool to even call my mom by her first name. Um, so she didn't allow me to say bad words until I was like, I don't know, like 15 years old. That's when it became acceptable. Of course, I said them all the time at school. And I would let one or two slip when I was at home and... You know, try to use, like, words that sound the same, like freaking or darn. You know, stuff like that. Shh. My brother, though, the super cool, nice kid, got to say whatever he wanted at 12, and he didn't take advantage of it. Wisely, you drop the cool act. It's important to be cool, but when Mom has her temper up, she can put you on ice permanently. <laughs> Intellectual sphere creases sharply. <laughs> oh. Wait, am I calmer now? Holy shit, children! My calmness and gentleness are going up. <laughs> there goes Andrea Weiner. Jeremy has said that she likes guys who are rough and tough. She is looking over at you and smiling. Uninterested. Granted, I had some rough and tough, turbulent years, but god damn it, I'm like 13. I don't need to deal with this shit. And I didn't. Whenever I was in school, did not deal with it. I guess this girl doesn't strike your fancy right now. Since she did show, show some interest in you, it was admirable, admirable of you not to try to take advantage of her. Thoughtfulness increases. God damn it. <laughs> Christina Farber got a little while playing spin the bottle at a friend's house yesterday. As a result, your neck looks like it was stung by a pack of wild hornets. <laughs> As you walk out of the bathroom, Dad inquires about the curious-looking marks. De out of it. What does out of it mean? Like that dreamy expression that a kid would get on his face, or I guess a male could get on his face? Like an older man, like... I reckon I could get a dreamy expression on my face. Usually doesn't happen. It's happened before. <laughs> uh, let's say I'm out of it and tell the truth. Oh, so it wasn't like a dreamy thing. Uh, <laughs> well, in that situation, being called on it directly, I probably would have been a little defensive and given an ex... Uh, my dad really didn't notice those things, though. He was too busy drinking. Oh, fuck it. Family relations are good. Your truthfulness makes them even better. Dad knows where you got the mark and might have even been embarrassed when he asked. Even though he trusts you, he feels the responsibility of keeping you out of trouble as much as possible. These talks will probably never prevent you from doing what you really want to do, but they can make you think twice about some things. God damn it. Oh yeah. Five of your friends have decided to chip in and buy one box of condoms between the six of you. You are... What? What? I'm less than 14 years old, right? <laughs> right? Um... I am Carl and I buy the condoms. You walk into the drugstore and notice a pretty teenage girl taking care of customers for a druggist. Oh. You place your order, you can... Open the box, take out a condom, and place one on the desk saying, Here's what happened. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Done some creepy things in my day. I'm pretty sure that would make it near the top of the list. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love to see some like some 14 year old kid do that. <laughs> That's not me. That has never been me. 
Especially not in the workplace with security cameras watching. Oh my god. You're probably the type of person that people call a real character. You may not have any reason to use them, but none of your friends will ever know that. You distribute them to your friends who put them in their wallets. Every couple of days, a friend comes up and asks, Did you use yours yet? You probably don't tell them a thing except, Just use your imagination. You are cool. Fuck yeah. <laughs> 13 years and 3 months of fucking buying condoms? <laughs> well, I mean, it is better to practice safe sex than not practicing safe sex. It's just... <laughs> oh, man. I'm a fucking pimp. What am I fucking playing? A goddamn Japanese visual novel harem game? Oh, shit. <laughs> fucking, where they call you like Playboy and Mega Demon Perv or some bullshit like that. And for some reason, all the ladies fall in love with you and you're completely clueless and don't have any fucking idea what's going on. That's totally what I'm playing. God damn it. Does it look like my father once went down? Oh, well, fuck it. Money, 500. Ooh. That's no good. Your friends all go to the shore for a beach party. It's late at night. One of your friends has a suggestion. He says, let's go skinny dipping. Uh... Could I be uninhibited and wait for everyone else to take their clothes off? Because you see, although I may be confident in myself, I do know where the fucking trap looks like. I've seen many traps in my day. And I don't want to be the guy to take their clothes off and all of a sudden fucking, like, teachers or parents or somebody comes screaming up and be like, Ugh. All levels of drama. That's really uninhibited, all right. All the uninhibited people are already in the water. You have barely removed your socks. Are you sure you're only going to go through this? Yes. <laughs> you take off, you close. <laughs> You take off your clothes. What you say? <laughs> Main screen on. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? All you clothes are belong to us. You are on the way to skinny dipping. Ha 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 ha. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. <laughs> oh, man. You take off your clothes, or you clothes, and quickly jump into the water. After a while, you begin to get cold. Unfortunately, when you decide to come back out, you realize that everyone else has already left the water. As a matter of fact, they are all dried off and dressed again. When you emerge, all eyes are upon you and your various attributes. <laughs> like my winning smile and my full-grown beard at 13 years old. <laughs> oh, well. Was that like an anxious moment for me? How did I react to that? Confidence go down? I know my money's fucking going down. It's leaking like a bitch. So I guess it should have been completely uninhibited, folks, like with all the cool kids. But I see traps in my day. I'm okay with taking it cautious. A couple of your friends have convinced someone to purchase a bottle of very cheap wine. They are excited about the idea of getting drunk. Mm. I am anxious slash ambivalent and share the wine. Your concern over what your friends might think of you combined with the fear of getting caught drinking causes you to act in a very peculiar way when you get home. Even though you are not drunk, your mom suspects that something funny is going on here. Even though you haven't taken enough to be drunk, your breath still smells. Ah, I'll just tell her. My mom is cool. Although my mom said if you're going to do any uh, drugs or drink any alcohol, do it in the house. If you're going to have sex with someone, do it in the house. Because she knew that kids would do their own thing and she just wanted me to be safe. My mom was a rebel whenever she was younger. She had no illusions about what I may not do, may or may not do. So she said, whatever you want to do, do it. Just do it in the house. She is disappointed in you, but more understanding than you would think. She thanks you for... Disappointed in me, for fuck's sakes. My calmness is continuing to like... Whee! 
in my money is continuing to go wheat because I'm engaging in too much social events, I believe. These fuckers are draining my income. You are on the school bus, on a class field trip, getting cozy with your newest girlfriend. You see these social cards that they kind of pop out, like girlfriends and shit and drama and all these things like that? I avoided much of that crap. You want to know why? Because I scared people. True story. <laughs> it's amazing how much you don't have to deal with whenever you scare people. Not to mention uh, the fact that I was pretty much unapproachable from a social level. I had some friends, though. We, we, we talked about stuff, and we'd hung around each other. We knew each other for a while, but in terms of, like, your cliques or your social groups, wasn't me. So getting cozy with my newest girlfriend is an entertaining thought for middle school. Uh, amorous but discreet and will just cuddle. You see, I might wish to have an intellectual discussion, but I've, I'm sure I've had many of those. Let's, let's not. We can have those at school. How romantic. Your girlfriend is very impressed. You are a sensitive person. Social sphere and several positive emotional indicators rise. So, yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Moving right along here. Seung Lee is a new Chinese student who can barely speak English. He appears awkward, is not aware of modern styles of dress, and is a bit clumsy. Everyone in school has begun to make fun of him. Well, you know me. <laughs> Fuck kids who make fun of other kids. <laughs> yeah, I was that asshole who, uh, who fought these sons of bitches. I got bullied in elementary school. And they tried that in middle school. And things happened. You approach him and with tremendous difficulty try to make conversation. He seems very shy and self-conscious about his communication difficulties. Your friends think you are stupid for wasting your time with him. It seems hopeless that the two of you will ever be able to understand one another. You can keep trying. Months pass and Seung, I guess, begins to learn English very quickly. Just think how long it would take you to learn Chinese if it were the other way around. As soon as he is able to express himself, he tells you that he appreciates your sympathy and friendship. You have made a lifelong friend. Good. I approve. God damn, look at my gentleness now. <laughs> I have just crushed your soul with kindness. <laughs> I am amused. Your friends ask if you would like to be in a rock group. Fuck yeah! <laughs> your first task is to come up with a suitable name for such a group. There are several suggestions. Choose the one you like best. The Tormented. That sounds like a fitting name for a talent of your caliber. Now you must choose a position in the band. Okay. I am the rock. I am the bass player. Fine, Maestro. Do you want to be... No. <laughs> okay. Think of all the bands you have heard of. We'll say within the past... 50 years. We'll go with 50. Sure, that's good. So, 1961. How many bassists have been the lead member of a band? I'm sure you can come up with a couple. But you can't come up with that many, can you? Not right now on the spot. You're like, if I have time with the, the internet here, I can look like a cool hipster and give you the answers you seek. But you can't do it now, can you? Unless you're a fucking music major, a goddamn bassist player. Yeah. Whenever it comes to instruments like that, your typical rock band or whatever the fuck with the lead singer, the guitar player, the bassist, and the drummer, I've always liked to be bassist. I'm like the glue that holds together the fucking rhythm. Besides, fucking bassist? Bass solos? Oh man, those can be sweet. It's like fucking kicked out. Just fucking beat the shit out of everyone. You take a low profile, but the audience can't resist your star qualities. Those eyes, those long, silky locks. Move over, Mick Jagger. Here comes the new king of rock and roll. <laughs> what are we looking at now? Pissing my money away. Oh, yeah. Livingston, a foreign friend from Jamaica. Livingston? <laughs> 
sorry, sorry, he's a, he's a friend of mine. Ask you over to his house for dinner. Your first course is an interesting looking kind of soup. You take a sip and find it delicious. You inquire, what kind of soup is this? Livingston's mother replies with a proud smile on her face, turtle soup. Cool. Uh, I'm open and try to eat all the soup. Your willingness to experience new things is remarkable. Besides, those little pieces of meat taste just like chicken. Your adventurousness delights Livingston's mom, who shows you pictures of her island and tells you about its people and customs. Intellectual sphere rises. Bitches, if it tastes good, fuck it. <laughs> then again, you might pop up, oh, it's made of human flesh. Well, I mean, as long as you uh, immersed it, you know, let it soak and marinate in the chilled tears of children. I'm fully opening to consuming human flesh. <laughs> A group of kids you hardly know have just made fun of you. Usually this might not bother you, but lately you have been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Your physical appearance has been disappointing you. Your family has been giving you a hard time about almost everything. No one seems to be saying or doing anything positive toward you. You have a bad case of the blues. Serious business, children. Now, of course, you could be like, Oh, I feel it just... F That's bullshit. If you really feel this bad, you just, uh... <laughs> if I'm feeling this way, I'm not gonna be fucking feeling just fine. God damn. So, uh, I'm gonna try to do something crazy here, I know. I'm gonna be depressed. Because my entire life is filled with shittiness. And I'm gonna talk to someone. Who would you like to talk to? Someone in my family, a friend, you know. Nah, I'll just leave that alone. Or a psychologist, no. Someone in the family. Your family is understanding and supportive. They don't actually tell you anything magical, but it lifts your spirits to know that they care enough about you to listen. Those fuckers better. Alright, moving on. John, a very close friend of yours, has been very depressed lately. You've seen him moping around the halls at school, keeping to himself. One day, you are running an errand for a teacher on the top floor of the building. One day, excuse me. One day while, while you are running an errand for a teacher on the top floor of the building, you see a shadow swaying on the school roof. You peer through the designs in the glass window panel, straining to see what is happening out there. It's John. You call out to him and discover that he is planning to jump off. He wants you to go away and make believe you didn't see him. He starts talking about wanting to be at peace. He refers to rock stars who have died, and how he will get a chance to be with them. Listen, are you sure? Well, I can't even reference Kurt Cobain. God damn it, he's... Nirvana hasn't been made yet. <laughs> God fuck. Suddenly, while he was talking, John loses his footing and begins to fall off the roof. He is able to grab onto a flagpole that is attached to the side of the building. He looks frightened and begins to cry. Um... I'm not panic-stricken, but I gotta admit, after seeing if it's one of my close friends, I'm gonna be fucking anxious here. And, uh... And rather than get help, I'm gonna try to help him myself. Even though this is an extremely tense situation, you are confident in your ability to save the life of your friend. You snake out onto a ledge and grab John's dangling feet. You pull him to safety inside the building. In the following weeks, you become a school hero. God damn it. A town mayor awards you with a medal honoring your courageous act. God damn it. That is not what I wanted. On a scale from one to not wanted... And Grimoth is continuing to piss away his funds. Whee! Well, I mean, if I'm fucking doing shit like buying condoms and everything, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Don't even have a fucking job and I'm buying condoms. <laughs> All I gotta know is, um, you know, just go to college, bro. Uh, my college, uh, the health center my college used to give away, like, they'd have, like, huge jars full of condoms that you could get for free. 
Consider it part of like the tuition costs. <laughs> I had like a residence back when I was a resident mentor. It was just like grip. They ended up like having like a shoebox full of condoms. Which is, you know, int incredibly smart and intelligent. It's like, uh, I mean, you know, you might as well get the fuckers for free. You're paying the damn tuition to be here. But it's still amusing, like, damn. You just want to be fucking whatever. As long as you don't fucking keep me awake, I'll do it. You and a friend are hanging around in the bathroom together. Your friend takes out some magic markers and begins to write on the walls. He asks you if you want to write something, too. What will you do? Now, isn't there like a ambivalent, I don't care about drawing? It's not that I don't want to get in trouble, it's that I don't care. Why is there a nonchalant, apathetic answer here? Why are you not satisfying my needs? Ah, ah fuck it. Oh, fuck it. You draw a figure of a female and label some of the more interesting parts. If the labels were not so descriptive, your picture would practically be impossible to recognize. You and your friend are snickering at the pictures and deciding what girl's name to put above it when you hear the distinctive sound, FLUSH. Mr. Black was evidently on the can while you were redecorating the bathroom. ATTENTION, GENTLEMEN! Mr. Black is an ex-marine drill sergeant. The two of you forward arch. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Worth any trouble that's going to happen to me. Worth it. <laughs> what are you doing, game? Oh, well. What the hell. You are still much too young to buy liquor, but your friends want to get wasted tonight. You know, I'm thinking about the friends that I had in school, and no. No. The friends I hung out with in middle high school did not want to get wasted. We wanted to play Magic the Gathering, or chess, or computer games, or talk about computer games, or tell good jokes, or just have a fucking good time. Sarcasm, you know, lots of fun shit. Got high on life, or fucking cans of Mountain Dew, and some of them like to consume Vault or Monster, or whatever the fuck. It <laughs> That's pretty much what they did. I, on the other hand, am already, <laughs> and I don't need that in my life. Anyway, well, I understand they're trying to cover the average kid who was going through average problems. Peer pressure didn't really hit me that much. Because I was confident enough to select the friends that I wanted to hang out with and didn't give a goddamn about friends I didn't want to hang out with. <laughs> Who's going to fucking peer pressure me into drinking anyway? All I'd have to do is go home and see my dad as he consumed a case of beer each night. And, um, yeah. No. Not interested. You don't seem to be interested in this kind of experience right now. Intellectual and physical... Right now? No, that's pretty much ever. I don't want to get wasted. Woo! Didn't exactly make me the most popular guy at college either. So many people with loose morals finally getting under the thumb of their parents, and I'm like, whatever. Early in the evening, a friend's mother appears mysteriously at the door and asks to speak to your mother. From another room, you hear the woman say that you have been a bad influence on her son, and that your mother should try harder to raise you the right way. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I'm supposed to be an alcoholic. Ruffle, 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 ruffle. Her complaints, by the way, are totally unjustified. First, you barely know her son. And second, he is the biggest juvenile delinquent in town without your help or anyone else's. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I'd be angry about it at first. But I'm going to be calm. Eventually calm myself down. Because, you know, I'm capable of doing that. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Things will pass. And I'll talk with my mom afterwards. After all, I'm so trustworthy, I'm sure she'll understand. If I'm furious and storm in, that nah, kind of proves the fucking woman's point, right? Or makes me look bad. You're obviously confident that this woman is not being totally accurate. 
You guess that your mother won't believe a word of what she is saying. Naturally, she doesn't. You chose the most mature set of responses. Good. Fourteen years old! Woohoo! Eighty-three percent gentleness. Gam, calmness is still in the tank. Sixty-three dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are we looking at here? Let's go this way. You have just mustered up the courage to ask Faith Morgan, voted hottest bot of the century, century by fellow classmates, out on a date. She looks you up and down, rolls her eyes, and says, "Be real." <laughs> Give her an almost universally understood finger signal. Nah. God damn it. Unflappable. I guess I'll just have to walk away then. Yep, I'll do that. Your guts may be turning, but outside you stay cool, cool, calm, and collected. You are confident, but rejection is hard to take at your age, no matter how well adjusted you are. God damn it, game. Rejection is still hard for people to take no matter how old they are. You tell someone no, like Griffin guy, he fucking freaks out. You'll probably meet someone who can appreciate these things in you. When you do, Faith becomes interested in you and tries to steal you away. Now is your chance. Remember, hottest bot of the century? You can... No. Good choice. This girl is only interested in guys she can't have. That was me rolling my eyes right there, just in case you couldn't tell. $49 to my name. Didn't I used to have, like, a fucking trust fund bank account with $900 plus dollars? Yeah. You are currently madly in love with a girl who is having a birthday next week. Jesus Christ. <laughs> my teenage hormones suck. I know this whole introspective reflection, look back on it all, <laughs> it's supposed to be calmer, <laughs> but this was not me at all. Uh, I guess I was just too damn smooth uh, to get into these problems. You're trying to think of what to get her. She has hinted about a very exp expensive piece of jewelry that would just about wipe out your life savings if you chose to buy it for her. Mmm, not that generous. Then look at something else. <laughs> you buy her a soap dish and some hand towels with some tacky oriental design on them, which were on sale in the salvage warehouse. She is less than impressed. You are given the brush off. I couldn't have, like, you know, designed something from the heart, like a card or a poem. I mean, I'm not that... J <sighs> Maybe I should have had mixed feelings about it. But I really didn't have mixed feelings about it. Whatever. Queers. Okay. So I'm actually going to, uh... $38. Let's go ahead and save the game here. I know I'm doing this on the camera. Out of curiosity. Let's check out some of these events. You've been studying all night long for a chemistry test. There is one formula that you, are at, that you absolutely cannot learn. At about 2 a.m., you begin to see how easy it would be to write the formula on your hand and cheat from it, will you? No. This is actually a matter of pride. This is like, God damn it! I will learn this. Fuck you, chemistry, haunting me for over my life. The more you try, the more you are frustrated. At 4 a.m., you finally doze off to sleep. The next day, when you sit down to take the test, you find out that the formula you couldn't learn was not included on this test. You're gr you grade for the test. You grade? You grade? Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? You grade for the test as B. Now I can accept that. So, can I do some work? Nope. Don't really feel like doing social things. I guess I'll play around with this event then. Mr. Black is the most hated teacher in the entire school. He's an ex-Marine drill sergeant who teaches gym class. Recently, he made every guy in your entire class do 100 push-ups just because someone sneezed funny. He is also the forward harch guy. A couple of the kids are planning to get back at him by slashing his tires. Their plan is to meet outside after school. One person will watch while the others will cut through the tires. Now, I've got to admit, um, considering how expensive tires are to replace, considering how much I know this, 
I didn't slash anyone's tires whenever I was a kid, but there's no way in hell I would even remotely consider it now. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Ruining someone's tires? Oh, you can just, like, patch them up and get, like, some tire stuff put on it. They'll be a good... No, they won't. Not if you do a slash job good enough. I'm not talking about fucking poking a goddamn hole in it. I'm talking about you taking a goddamn jackknife and... <laughs> Oh, you can just not put duct tape on it. it no. <laughs> so I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and stop this event. Just so it was all seen. Stop. So I don't have to participate. There we go. We've seen some other things now. Isn't that cool, everybody? Actually, you know, I really don't. I'm not interested. Let's just keep going through the cards. I'll leave that for you guys, the whole social thing. Maybe do some work, you know, whenever I'm old enough to work. Uh, I guess like 15, 16 is when I should start being able to get jobs. Yep. Well, sitting around the house with a girlfriend one night, she says she wants to give you a manicure. This is sexual? How? Mmm, unless there is some late 80s innuendo involving manicure. Um... You know what, sure. I'm looking at my nails right now. They're trimmed. <laughs> what the hell? I'm adventurous enough. Let's give this a shot. Letting your friend groom you puts her in a very romantic mood. After she finishes the job, you get cozy on the couch and have a hot and heavy time. Unfortunately, the next day, your friends see your polished nails and rag on you for days about it. Little do they know. Alright. Ladies, if you want to give me a manicure, that's cool. Your dad's boss thinks that you are a fine young man. He would be honored if you would consider ex escorting his lovely daughter Mathilda to the company dinner dance. Mm. How much of a trap do you guys think this is? Let me crack open a can of soda here. Pop. Carbonated beverage. <sighs> to be specific, it's a Diet Crush Orange. <laughs> By the way, segue. Some of you may have noticed, I'm a tall guy. It was big. Now, for many years, whenever I would go into restaurants, now that I'm thinking of this, I can't stop. And, uh, you know, for so many years, they'd make jokes about people who, uh... Excuse me computer chair got caught on something who are just uh you know they they eat healthily they eat very healthily talking about people who are pushing 300 400 pounds and yet they would order diet sodas now uh you know i got to chuck a lot of this too no uh, because at the time i was not interested in like non-sugary beverages but as i got older you know and i uh, my taste changed i decided that um like like, whenever I was younger, like, I used to be able to eat more than what I can now. Which is saying something, because I can eat a lot still right now. Food bill. <laughs> Highest priority right here. And I am, I, I'm totally all for paying a lot of money for a good meal. That, that's what I really like to spend my pleasure money on. Anyway, what I'm trying to get out of here is that um, I realized the sugar, you know, not only would it change me by making me more hyper than what I already am, but it also had a tendency to fill me up more. Whereas a diet soda, where it has reduced calories, or not at all, not at calories at all, is like water, and it doesn't really fill you up at all, giving you more opportunity to eat. Which is excellent. So that's pretty much why I drink it now. Not only do some diet sodas taste good, which is what I go for, diet sodas that actually taste good. You know, like a Coca-Cola Zero, or Diet Crush Orange, or Sunkist, or whatever the fuck, or Lemonade. That's not really a carbonated beverage. What I'm trying to say here is that it's perfectly cool, and you shouldn't laugh at those people. At least because in my case, 
I'm just saving the room for the food, baby. It's not about weight. It's about the food. Because, uh, I can always have water with my food. But I don't want to have ramen in a fucking, you know, top dollar <laughs> glass of Pepsi. Anyway, to get back to the point here, um, I can be suspicious about this. I mean, Mathilda could be less than impressive for a 14-year-old boy. But you know, what the hell. Maybe make a good impression, you know. Why not? Could be useful to make a contact whenever you're 14 years old. Sure. This was a very open-minded set of choices. You arrive at the country club waiting to meet Dad's boss's daughter. All of a sudden, this movie star walks up to you. Your eyes glaze, your mouth gets dry, and you must concentrate very hard to prevent your tongue from dropping out of your mouth. Could this be Mathilda? He'll probably be the guy's wife. Nope, it's some lady who thinks you work there parking cars. Mathilda arrives complete with braces, pigtails, and a squeaky laugh. As the night goes on, you find out she's not so bad. Dad gets a raise the following week. Now about the company picket next month. See, wasn't so bad, everyone. Your dad decides he wants to have a long talk with you about college. I'm like 14 years old. What the shit? In his talk, he advises you to do all the things you think you would like to do least. He suggests careers that you couldn't see yourself doing in a million years. He talks about colleges that seem dull and uninteresting. Say, son, have you ever thought of going to a military college? You get to, you get the distinct sense that he has already planned the next eight years of your life for you. At this point, you may not be sure that you want to go to college at all. Don't know about that. Mmm... I am calm, and we'll listen to him quietly. I have plenty of time. Now, if he's talking about this shit when I'm, like, 18 years old, then we have a problem. Are you calm because... I appreciate his helping me set up my life. But I'm still going to do what I want, no matter what. This is the time in your life when you should be taking some of the responsibility for what you are going to do with the rest of it. Perhaps you are letting yourself be guided a bit too much. If these are the things you want to do fine, you are going to have to learn how to make decisions on your own someday. I already have. I was kind of doing that because, you know, I didn't want to hurt his feelings, I was appreciative of it. We couldn't have a blind dancer, both, whatever. An ad in the paper says, wanted, young adults, 15 to 20 for acting, modeling jobs, ask for Rod. You know, I like to do a bit of drama and theater and acting and stuff, sure. Ron seems very interested in you and gives you an appointment for an interview. When you arrive at the place where the interview is to be held, you notice that it is a bare apartment with almost no furniture. Just a mattress and an old desk with a phone on it. It's a trap! No. This place could only have meant bad news. One of the older kids in school takes you aside and offers you a quick way to make money by dealing drugs. Nothing too heavy or dangerous, according to him. All you would have to deal is some pot and a few lewds. Nah. You can let somebody else make money. You know, I'm kind and charitable. He tells you that you have just passed up the opportunity to make some easy money. He is caught dealing three weeks later, but nothing much happens to him. Three months after that... You read that he was jailed in South America during a drug-related incident. Wait, how the fuck old am I? What the shit? Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> a cousin of yours asks if you would like to inherit his weight set. Mm. 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 Now. No, can't say I am, really. It's cool. Appreciate it, though. Sounds like too much hard work for you. Besides, who wants to look like those muscle-bound guys who can't even comb their hair without their biceps getting in the way? Seriously. What the fuck? I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> Twelve dollars, yeah. 
You are annoyed because your father doesn't seem to be paying attention to what you what you say these days. What you say? You would appreciate it if he would treat you more like a person. While you are trying to explain this to him, he begins correcting your grammar. <laughs> Children, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let me think back to the last time my father corrected my grammar. Oh, was it right about this age? It's hard saying most of my conversations with him were when he was drunk. And despite having solid intellectual power, he can't quite say. We played chess. He beat my ass regularly. But him? Correct me? <laughs> if anything, I was the one correcting everyone else around me. Uh, middle school, since I got grammar uh, hammered in so much in my head, I would take the time, painfully and painstakingly, to correct everyone else's grammar, both around me in real life and while on the internet. It's part of why I type things um, so, like, uh, you know, grammatically correct, like with the proper capitalization and syntax and everything, because I've been practicing it for so many years, it comes uh, natural to me, and uh, not use capitalization or punctuation really pissed me off, and it would be harder for me to type. At any rate, yeah, um, <laughs> this is funny. So, suspend the disbelief. Assertive. See, I can't believe it. You're doing it again. Say, you know, Dad, this is a perfect example. Period. I'm trying to express myself right now. And you are putting me down by correcting my English. Your dad is taken aback by your assertiveness and is forced to examine his own behavior. He realizes that he has been unfair to you and apologizes. The two of you gain a mutual respect for one another. You see, I wouldn't have been surprised if in there there was buried uh, an English heir and he started correcting that instead. I mean, our father has proven himself to be a dick already, so why not? Um, uh, moving on. Some of your friends are going to the city this weekend to get tattooed. Now, I don't have any tattoos myself. I've considered getting them before in the past, but always I uh, consider that a luxury that, you know, I can hold off on. Until, like, I'm super sure of absolutely what I want. You know, I guess, like, whenever I started Let's Getting On With It, whenever I started Let's Playing... I held out for the right one. In this case, it was Liberal Crime Squad. So if I ever do get a tattoo, it'll be the right one. Maybe have, like, Do Not Resuscitate tattooed on my chest. Although, now that I'm looking down at my chest, probably shouldn't have anything put there. There is way too much manliness. Moving on. <coughs> uh, how old am I? Is this legal? <laughs> well... Ah, right now. That costs money. I'm not very adventurous, I know. You've just saved yourself a lot of unnecessary pain. Wait, what? What? What kind of judgment is that? I told you, children, sometimes this game can be preachy. What kind of fucking judgment is that? What? <laughs> maybe that. Maybe it's telling that from my perspective of it, since I wasn't interested. Whatever. Gay. A close friend of yours has been showing up everywhere drunk lately. Although he seems to function well at his after-school job, people are beginning to talk about him. <clears throat> I am concerned, and I try to help him straight down, because if he's a friend, I'm going to try to do that. He denies that he has any problem. Okay, that's right. You convince yourself that you tried your best, but he wouldn't accept your help. Yep. Now, there's, like, some people who tell you, like, you should, like, if you're adamant that someone has a problem, you do that, and you break them down no matter what. And, well, if that happened, I don't know enough about my friend in question there, so I'm not going to insist too much. I'll just observe him more, and if he really looks like he's having a hard time, then I'll try again. Until I rule these things in my head. All of your friends are skipping class, and they want you to come along, too. Back whenever I went to school, 
this was pretty difficult with the teachers that I had since I was in the upper echelon courses. They fucking paid attention to, like, attendance and shit. It was hard. I am disinterested. According to your status sheet, you are not the type of person who would usually pass up this kind of adventure. What? What? Fuck you! <laughs> According to my status sheet, I'm fucking ace in every goddamn thing in the entire fucking galaxy except for calmness. You don't know me! <laughs> Perhaps you are beginning to accept responsibility a bit more. Intelligence, trustworthiness, and family characteristics show moderate increases. Goddamn game. You are hanging around at your friend's house. There's nobody home but you and he. Your friend goes into his parents' bedroom and emerges with a small yellow box. He opens the box and shows you his father's gun. A chrome revolver. Acting anxious might cause your friend to tease you or egg you on with the gun. He did a dangerous thing by taking the gun out. One or both of you could have been killed. Intellectual sphere increases. Remember, if you get into those situations, remain calm. Don't act nervous. The guy who likes to have fun and play jokes and everything senses this. Like a shark hunting blood in the water. And he'll search. And then what happens? One of you gets your fucking heads blown off. It's science! <laughs> Life lessons with Father Grimmeth. <laughs> Good joke. On the back of an old matchbook cover, you see an offer which promises you the possibility of a free art scholarship if you can draw Winnie, a cartoon figure on the inside flap. Well, fuck yeah! Let's go ahead and give this a goddamn try! Your picture is returned with an offer to enroll a home study course sponsored by the International Institute of Constructive Creation, Creative Painting and Art. Tuition is, of course, waived because you qualify for a full scholarship. There is a $499.99 fee plus state sales tax for applicable fee for tools and materials. Are you interested in purchasing these materials? No. I don't have the money to do that. You really had me worried for a minute. Your tools and materials would have consisted nothing more than a fancy box of crowns and some drawing pads. Yeah. One, I don't have a money. And two, it's a fucking trap. <laughs> Come on, children. I have five dollars to my name. <laughs> that, that's more along my speed of how, how much money I have. <laughs> Let's continue. Your parents have gone out for the night. You and your fr two friends are sitting around with nothing much to do. One of your friends asks, what kind of booze do your parents have in the house? <laughs> you know this will be a stupid thing to do. You will almost surely get caught. It's not like they're going to fucking like, what am I going to tell them? Like, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. It just walked up and vanished. You fucking kidding me? God damn. My parents aren't that stupid, are they? Oh yeah. You're getting dressed one day and notice a small red mark on your penis. Could it be some kind of disease? Knew I should have used the lube a little bit more. God damn it. <laughs> Son of a fucking bitch. Okay, children. You don't fuck around with this. For however many females of you are watching, for those of you who don't have penises, maybe you're fucking extraterrestrial, allow me to clue you in. Teenage boy... Pretty focused on his penis. Something goes awry on that penis. Panic. Everyone fucking panic. Shut down everything. Fucking iron shutters on the goddamn windows. This is DEFCON 1. Shit is about to fucking go down in thermonuclear war, World War 3. That's, that's the fucking panic button right there. For your teenage male. So I gotta admit, I'm a little anxious. <laughs> I gotta say, let's go to the doctor about this one. You know, I, what I'd probably end up doing is asking my father rather than go to the doctor. I was never put into this situation where I, you know, deal with like 
thankfully. <laughs> you have developed a cancerous tumor. Like, that would have been bad. But you should always check to make these things short and careful. Because God forget, forbid any male have to like live without his penis for the next 60 years of his life. Nothing to worry about. It's just a pimple. Uh, okay. Good. Let's move on here. So, I should be 15 years old. Yeah. So, uh, let's go ahead and save the game again. Actually, just see if I can try some of this job stuff. What kind of job would you like to apply? I would like to be an assistant in a law office. Congratulations, you start work immediately. Excellent. I'm a law office assistant, and I'm fucking intelligent as fuck, children. Sweet, I have some money, too. In your own opinion, you have been doing a good job at work. Your boss, however, constantly complains about the pickiest things. He never tells you when you have done a good job. When you do something really wrong, or wrong rather, he really lets you have it, even when you foul up on something easily correctable. To make matters worse, most of the mistakes you make are his fault. Now he has called you into his office for a discussion. This usually means that you are going to get yelled at for something. Can I be unbothered and stick up for myself? Like, cool, calm, and collected and stick up for myself? Because that's what I've done before in workplace situations. Mm, in terms of job maintaining, that's not always the best decision. Like, if you want to keep the job, mm, sticking up for yourself can be a ride. But, my opinion, uh, the pros vastly outweigh the cons. You are the mellow type who tries not to let the opinions of others influence you in a negative way. You calmly point out that he is responsible for a lot of the problems you are having. He calmly fires you. Yup. I'm okay with that. Apply for a job. Assistant in the law office. I'm sorry you have all the qualifications, but this position has already been filled by someone else. There are regular job openings, so please try again later. That like consume time? I think that did. I probably should have done that anyway. Hold on. Let's do this right, everyone. Apply for a job. Assist in the law office. Now let's go do the same thing. Unbothered, stick up for yourself. Yep. And now, let's, uh... Apply for... Clerk in a drugstore. Oh, damn. Ouch! Okay, I'll handle that, because that was REJECTION! Sorry you were too young for this episode. You are in a quiet, pensive mood, and your thoughts turn to the subject of religion. Your family's beliefs seem out of step with your own, as you wonder about the nature of your existence. Would they understand if you told them about the differences? I'm curious, and confront your family and talk to them about what you are thinking. Your desire to question the meaning of religion's faith, religion, faith, and some of life's larger, more philosophical questions is admirable. This kind of independent thinking stimulates the mind and fuels divergent thought. Your parents accept your right to your views, but strongly disagree. You feel that their arguments are weak compared to yours. They seem to accept more things on faith. You want reasons. This discussion seems futile until you realize that perhaps the most important aspect about it is their acceptance of you and their secret pride in the knowledge that you are a bright, free-thinking person. That's how my parents were, and I'm bleeded about that. People gotta figure it out for themselves. Right, I already tried that. So, let's say I tried to get a position again. I was rejected. It was sad. Ouch! Maybe if I try... Click on a drugstore. Ouch! Maybe if I try... Okay. That didn't take, like, forever at all. I think that's actually going to bother me. Yep! You know what? Let's remain unemployed, everyone. That's a good idea. I know, I'm not, like, iron manning out my life. It's terrible. Jesus Christ. Get over it. But they understand that you told them, but curious, confront your family and tell you what they're thinking. Alright, we went through this already. Now let's move on. 
While you are shopping in town one day, a woman who introduces herself as a photographer tells you that you are very handsome, that she might be able to get some modeling work for you. She gives you her card. Oh, modeling work? Me? For what, Dungeons and Dragons United? <laughs> I just had some large things pop in my head. <laughs> Been recording for over an hour. The woman tells you that she has just been given an assignment to shoot some models for a famous men's underwear manufacturer. Would you be willing to pose for some pictures? The pay is $500 for modeling. Do you not realize how old I am? <laughs> how is this legal? Yes. Good. All you have to do is take off all your clothes and have a seat over there. How do you feel? That it's a trap. But I'm not nervous or embarrassed. I'm perfectly comfortable and suspicious. That kind of calmness is not in your personality. As a result, you try to act calm and collected instead of being calm and collected. The posing doesn't work very well. No. So what would happen if it said, theoretically, I visit the woman in her studio, and I want to do that, but I'm nervous and embarrassed? Ooh, the seat is cold, and you don't seem to have enough hands to cover up the parts. You try to appear casual, or end up looking like a cheap invitation. It's just the equipment she asks you to put on with what you're like saying. Oh, I thought this was going to be, like, quickly over. I wasn't expecting more shit to pop up. Huh. After she sets up the equipment, she asks you to put on what looks like a little sack with a string going around to the other side. You ask her what magazines the pictures will appear in. She says all the major men's magazines and any of the newspapers that will agree to print them. They are a bit risque. You can continue. Click, click, snap. The photographer tells you... Okay. For the sake of this, I'm going to keep these results... No matter what. I'm not reading any more of the paragraph. I must enhance my calm if I want to read this in a straight face for the internet. I'm not going to use a feminine voice. So the whole lawyer thing, the whole save loading thing, it's totally worth it because i got to get to do this for you and it's going to totally make up. I'm going to read this totally robotic too with a complete lack of emotion. Come on, baby. Look sexy. I love it. More face. More face. That's it. My, uh, my seventh grade, uh, literature arts teacher would have been, uh, very disappointed in me. Whenever I read, like, Flowers for Algernon, she demanded that I use more passion. Because <laughs> I was, like, the most grown-up and mature and responsible reader, and even I was like, I don't want to read this out loud. <laughs> Social awkwardness. You feel like a piece of raw beef, but the session ends and you are well paid. Two months later, so... I try to act calm, and that doesn't work. So then I act nervous, so I get a robe, so I eventually embrace the... This is why I feel justified in saving and loading. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Two months later, and the photos appear in some men's magazines, only one person notices the resemblance between you and the guy in the ad. Do you... Sure. He doesn't believe you. Oh, well. One more time. Interested? Visit the woman in her studio. Yes. But I'm nervous slash embarrassed. Ooh, the seat is cold and you don't seem to have enough hands to cover all the parts you need covering. You try to appear casual but wind up looking like a cheap imitation of the statue, the thinker. The woman gets you a robe. After she sets up the equipment, she asks you to put on what looks like a little sack with a string going around the other side. You ask her, so I'll continue, and I will remain quiet. Sigh, the burdens of stardom. Okay. Alright, everyone. No more saving or loading in this video, I think. 
But I will do something crafty, like, say, apply for a job, assistant to law office, and completely ignore this card. Shh, don't tell anybody it's a secret. I'm letting you on to a very special event of how I play games sometimes. Like in Daggerfall, I will save and load to get a good experience. Something that I could be satisfied with. It doesn't have to be the best. It just satisfies me. Those didn't satisfy me. That. What just happened satisfies me. You're in a quiet, pensive mood, right? We've discussed this. Okay, moving on. Oh, we're kind of at the top. Your best friend since grade school has been looking depressed and confused. He's usually a very happy-go-lucky person, so you really can't understand what could be wrong. You know, now I'm just thinking about it. Another reason why um, I'm, like, so young up here at the top is because I haven't taken the time to fiddle around with other things. I've just, for the most part, just played the cards. Um, I will be concerned and ask him what is wrong. He tells you that there is nothing wrong, but you can see by his face that he is deeply troubled. I will keep pressing him to tell me then. After much hesitation, he lowers his eyes and blurts out that he thinks he is homosexual. Or a homosexual, rather. He is worried that if he tells any friends, they will desert him and that he will be laughed at. What are you feeling right now? Accepting. It is nice to see that you are willing to be supportive. Um, sympathize and ask him to tell you his troubles as opposed to offer support and suggest professional counseling. You may be asking for more work than you are willing to provide for this friend. As a result of your sympathy, he becomes very dependent, telling you his every problem, every thought, and every worry. This is bound to wear down the patience of even the most true blue friend. That's true. At this time in your life, I'm sure that you have many of your own problems to deal with. As a result, you become tired of being his therapist and begin to avoid him. Your friendship eventually dwindles away. Ouch. I reckon suggesting professional counseling could have been the best decision, but you know I'm so generous and everything, and you know I'm like 15 years old. How am I supposed to professionally handle these decisions? Shit. I couldn't have made like the judgment though of like trying to make him more independent as opposed to us just completely losing our friendships. Whatever. I don't have those kinds of great choices in this game, children. It's kind of cut and dry. You notice someone stealing an extremely large amount of valuable property from work. Yeah. Let's go ahead and tell the boss. Only I'm allowed to steal things from work. The boss, if you, boss asks if you can prove what you are saying. Since you have no pictures or direct evidence, he tells you there's nothing I can do. This is one of those times when you think the whole world is completely insane. Sometimes it just about is. Whatever. You are shopping at a drugstore. It is almost closing time. The manager is letting the customers out one by one, keeping the door locked so no one else can come in. Suddenly, the man in front of you at the cash register takes out a gun and announces a holdup. He smells heavily of alcohol, and it looks as if the gun could be fake. <laughs> We've already covered on numerous occasions how crazy I am, children. Determined I am to achieve, I don't know, my own sense of morals, my own, uh, satisfy my own ethical beliefs. <laughs> In this case, no. He is drunk. And the gun is fake. You are surprised at how easy he is to subdue. You don't realize your own strength. As you wrestle with him, you hit him in the nose and break it. He is a pitiful character who begins to cry before the police arrive. Really? So, how much of a man am I? I'm a beast! Calmness, though, and completely in the shitter. <laughs> Hopefully I'll mellow out as I get older. <laughs> Holy shit! That's awesome. You and a group of your friends are getting together to go to a movie. Your best friend and his date are picking you up at your house, and the three of you are meeting everyone else, including your own date at the theater. Excuse me. 
The doorbell rings and you are greeted by a dark-haired beauty with sparkling eyes and a devastating figure. She smiles at you and tells you her name is Cheryl. Your friend is waiting in the car because he isn't feeling well. In the car and at the movies, you and Cheryl make small talk. After all, your best friend isn't feeling up to par. You wouldn't want Cheryl to have a lousy time and resent him. Besides, your date seems to be so engrossed in the movie, she doesn't seem to mind either. Midway through the movie, your friend pulls you aside and asks if you wouldn't mind taking Cheryl home. He knows she is enjoying the movie and he is feeling too ill to stay. Yeah, I'll take her home. But I'm going to take my date home first. No. No, 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 no. And this is a threat. No. My date is going to be the one who stays with me the longest. Cheryl goes home first. So I can have more time with my date. Because, you know, God forbid. You, like, take your date home first. And then it's like, oh. And you have to deal with all sorts of drama about what she might think that you were doing with Cheryl. And then. I may be completely misplaying this question here, and it's completely the opposite of what I'm thinking, but I'm taking Cheryl home first. Cheryl says goodbye to your date and asks if you would walk her to the door. She kisses you on the cheek. You think you feel her finger poke something into your back pocket. Later that evening, you discover that Cheryl slipped you a piece of paper with her phone number on it. No. Two displays of loyalty to your friend in one night. You could have taken Cheryl home last and had a romantic interlude with her. You could also have gotten together with her some other time, particularly after you knew she was interested in you. You are a good friend and will probably go far in the world. I already had a girlfriend. Fuck. That's just not right. I know. I avoided a romantic interlude. That's terrible of me. A group of friends are getting together for a toga party this Friday night. Toga! 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 You arrive at the party stunningly draped in one of your mom's best sheets. On the table there is beer, wine, and hard liquor. Someone mentions that there are drugs available for sale from a person at the other end of the room. What would you prefer to have? Nothing. How wild would you like to get at this party? Mmm, mildly wild. <laughs> wild, extremely wild, maniacal. I don't think that's kind of going to work since, you know, I'm not taking anything. Are you planning on trying to meet any girls at this party? I really don't. Th nah. Perhaps there's like a, you know, a wallflower, you know, sitting off to the side or something. But no, I'm just here for a good time. That's a good thing. This party is a total bore. Sorry, well, I guess I know we have nothing else to do, but, uh... This one, yep. Okay, let's go through some events here. You've been studying all night long for chemistry tests. There's one formula. I've already been through this. Keep trying to learn it. B minus. Ouch. I made a B on that the last time. That upsets me. I am sad. Maybe it's because I... I, my calmness is shitty, but on the bright side, I have some money now, bitches. So let's continue. You have forgotten your new class schedule. Will you go down to the office to get a new one? Don't walk into a class that looks like one you should be in. That's just asking for trouble. They don't have a copy of it either. The computer is broken. You have to sit in the office and keep yourself out of trouble until the computer is working again. Boring. Mr. Mrs. Harnar, your English literature teacher, is getting on in years. Everyone knows that she is a bit hard of hearing. Whenever she gives a test, people can whisper to one another without the slightest chance of being heard. On today's test, everyone seems to be cheating. There are two answers that you do not know. Will you... I will do my own work. Because you didn't cheat, you get those two questions wrong, and your grade is lower. The people who did cheat think you're foolish. I'm okay with that. You have committed the most serious of all possible crimes in gym class. You have forgotten your gym shorts. Damn it! I never did that in uh, middle and high school for gym class. Always remembered my clothes. It was serious business. 
Mr. Black, the ex-Marine drill sergeant, will use this as an excuse to have you drop and do 50. Freddy always has an extra pair of gym shorts, and he is about your size. If I confront Mr. Black with bad news, I know it's going to happen. Fuck this. I don't want to do 50 push-ups. Freddy hands you his extra pair of gym shorts. They are crinkled up so badly the school name and logo are unreadable. They are also completely stiff. The inside band that used to be white is now dark gray. You can... I'll wear the shorts. Your legs and crotch are itchy for the rest of the day. I... <laughs> Seems unsanitary wearing someone else... Uh... Let's just go on. Let's just move on. Your biology teacher is breezing through the miraculous inner workings of the common cockroach, Blabberus Cranifer. It is enough to make you lose your lunch. You can't understand a word he is saying, but everyone else seems to be nodding and following along. What will you do? Gonna be a dick, stop him, and ask for clarification. Your teacher is impressed by the fact that you thought enough of the subject matter to ask him to explain it so that you fully understand it. His explanation makes it almost barely understandable, but at least it's that's enough to get you through the next quiz. Oh, God. He even gives you a few live souvenirs to take home and study on your own. God damn it. What do you do with the souvenirs? <laughs> I don't know who Mary Jane is. School cafeteria definitely has enough cockroaches already. I'm sure my mom and dad would like to see the cockroaches, though, so I'm totally taking them home and telling them what has happened. Brown nose! <laughs> Ouch. Social sphere. Moving on. Your home economics teacher, Mrs. Eschbach, is upset because no one seems to be paying any attention to her. Most of the students in class are going completely berserk. Matt just made a dough bomb and hurled it across the room. Larry stole a frog from science class and covered it with melted chocolate. You're behaving relatively mildly, but just laughed hard at the fact that Jimmy spilled some flour on the front of Jeanette's shirt and tried to brush it off. All of a sudden, Mrs. Eschbach singles you out and sends you to the principal's office. What will you do? I'll go down to the office. Fuck it. You are on your way down to the office when it occurs to you that no one will know if you just walk around the halls for a little while, hang around the bathroom, and walk out. No. No. Ah, this will always come back to bite you in the ass. Fuck it. Go to the damn office. In my, in my middle and high schools, my teachers did a very good job of keeping being track of kids. You wait outside the principal's office while the secretary, Mrs. Grungy Grundy, Grudney, announces your request for a meeting. The principal is fed up with Mrs. Eschbach dumping all her problems on him. He sends you back to class. <laughs> Good joke. Mr. Horace, a social studies teacher in your school, has a funny habit of twitching one eye when he speaks. You are always sure to get a laugh out of your friends whenever you imitate this twitch for them. Oh. One day in class, Mr. Horace is interrupted by someone wishing to give him a message. As he walks over to the door, a friend starts asking you to do Horace. Will you... Not now. It was nice of you to give Mr. Horace a break. He is aware of how everyone makes fun at him, and even though he doesn't show it, he is very sensitive about it. Aww. You've been given attention after school for a disturbance you had absolutely no part in. Mr. Black comes in and asks for volunteers to help him wash his car as an alternative to detention. Well, fuck. That's going to be far more exciting than goddamn fucking sitting around in the damn detention. Is. I'll actually get to move around and talk. Jesus Christ, yes. After you're outside, you're handed a sponge and told to get to work. Work fast and finish as quickly as possible. You sold out, but I guess you made the best of an unpleasant situation. <laughs> I sold out? <laughs> Selling out to the man. <laughs> I'm a pussy, I know. Whatever. <laughs> Moving on here. Mr. Andre, your French teacher, who everyone in school claims is gay, has asked for your help cleaning up his office after school today. He asked you in front of a whole group of your friends who begin to look at one another and make faces. Mm, 
I have something to do after school. I really don't want to help... <laughs> I don't want to help teachers clean. I have to do enough cleaning on my own. My parents are riding my ass. But if I choose this option, they'll be like, Oh, I'm so insensitive. Oh, I'm a dick. But, you know, that would just be even worse. I'm not going to, like, lie to the guy. Completely shaken up by the request, you tell him you work in a local coal mining operation and have almost no time to yourself. You quickly excuse yourself. Your friends tease you anyway, saying, Why did he ask you in the first place? Fucking assholes. You are starving, and the cafeteria line seems to be moving very slowly. Today's menu includes meatballs, bread balls, cardboard, pizza, and chicken mystery of the unknown meat pies. About the only things edible seems to be the french fries and the white powdered donuts. You take a portion of fries, but by the time you get to the cash register, you have already finished them. You can... Nah, I'm gonna pay for the fries. I did that whenever I was in lunch lines. I'd fucking eat and pay for the damn food. It's like, fuck it, I'm gonna pay for it. It's a good thing you didn't try to sneak through. Millie the cafeteria lady can smell french fry breath from 200 yards away. That That's great. So what am I at like now? 16 years old? I'm unattached? Can I do this? It's time for the junior prom. Are you planning to attend? Pretty much do what I did, um... In real life? No. I know, that was boring. No junior prom for me, children. I'm okay with that. <laughs> 16 years, 4 months? Ah, uh, let's go see if, uh... Did... I guess that's... I already have a job. Do I apply for a different one? Don't really want to apply for a different one. What's this? Right, social act, whatever. Mrs. Cromwell, the music teacher, has volunteered you to sing the Star Spangled Banner as... God damn it. Fine, whatever. I'm not a good singer. You have the confidence necessary to withstand this experience. As a matter of fact, you don't sound half bad. It's time to pick up your new locker assignment. Didn't use a locker in middle of high school. I did in sixth grade. Actually, no. I guess in middle school I did have lockers, and I just didn't use them in high school, because you had to pay... Well, you kind of had to pay for them in middle school, too. <coughs> I guess in high school I started being less of a bitch and just carried all my books around with me and hurt my back, because I'm a fucking beast! Mm -hmm. uh, let's just keep my old locker, because I know that and where it is. The person in the locker next to you has switched. Your new neighbor is a gorgeous young blonde who won't give you the time of day. Aww... Mr. Harvey is a school guy. Well, you fucking grow up already, so I'm gonna get to d adulthood. Jesus Christ. He was a school guidance counselor who was kind and helpful to all the students. After 30 years of faithful service to the school, he's leaving. Your teacher requests a donation for a present. Will you contribute? Yes. If I like them, sure. How generous? Any amount will be fine. How much will you donate? I have the money to spare. I'm richer than I was at his age, so... Much appreciated. I mean... Well, I... To glue that. You are still new to high school. An upperclassman offers to sell you the discount pass to the school swimming pool for only 50 cents. He claims proceeds will go to charity. Do you buy the tickets? <laughs> no! I'm sure you have guessed. Your school doesn't have a swimming pool. All this fucking trick. I mean, look at how much money I have. That's like so much money compared to what I have in real life right now. I wish I could work as a law assistant. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> Miss... <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. You say that this episode contains a strong amount of sexual content, and you give me a teacher that's named Miss Hummer? <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> Miss Hummer, your math teacher, is a 26-year-old knockout. She puts any girl in the school to shame. One year on a class trip to the beach, she wore a bikini. Joey Brandt took pictures of her and sold them around school for $5 each. You raise your hand to ask her a question. She slinks over to you and leans forward to answer your question. What a view. After she helps you, she walks past and brushes her hip against the desk where your hand is. When you see your friends later, you can... Nah. I'm not going to say anything. Whatever. They saw what they saw. 
Who would believe that you got a free feel out of Miss Hummer anyway? Besides, Miss Hummer is engaged to a linebacker for the LA Rams. Wow. You certainly wouldn't want him to think you got a free feel out of Miss Hummer, would you? No. The teacher asked for a volunteer from the class to help an Italian exchange student, Lola, learn to speak English. I already helped like a Chinese exchange student, so sure. Wouldn't it be great if Lola were this incredible looking, sexy, wild, and uninhibited Italian fox? It would be, but as it turns out, Lola is rather ordinary looking to you. That's not why I decided to help her anyway. As it turns out, Lola has a really great personality. She becomes a good friend. Your grade on your last science test was terrible. The day after school, Mr. Hinckley is offering a help session to those who did poorly. Your dilemma, should you go for the help session or to an after-school party at your friend's house? Isn't there a third option, go home and try to study it on my own? No, go to the help session. Mr. Hinckley is 10 minutes late. Will you... 15-minute rule here. 15-minute rule. Stay. As it turns out, Mr. Hinckley is a bit of a flake. He forgot all about the help session uh, he offered and went home right after school. You can go to the party after all. Woohoo! Warning. Yes. You and your classmates are changing into your clothes for gym class. For a moment, everyone is naked. Even though you try not to look, you can't help wondering about how you measure up to the other guys. How do you feel? No. <laughs> the game the, the game will probably be like, you don't have enough calmness. Bitch, I have enough confidence. That's a train sound. Great. This is an unusually calm response. <laughs> On a scale from one to unconcerned, wasn't worried. That wasn't me. The guys were like, ah, you're kidding. Yeah, sure. Okay. When I was 13 years old. How old am I now? Yeah, I stopped caring. <laughs> Once I learned some shit, I stopped caring. <laughs> the whole class takes a job ability and interest test. Would you like to hear your results? Sure. Your highest area of aptitude is in manicure. <laughs> Good joke. The local police are called in to search the lockers for illegal substances. And I'm going to pause the video now. Oh my god. Almost 90 minutes. Jesus. Now that my fucking desk has stopped shaking. Jesus Christ. I, I shouldn't have bothered to, to, to load many times. I should have just got going straight through. I didn't think it would be this long. So, have I stashed anything in my in my uh, locker for in terms of illegal substances? No, I didn't do drugs. The only things they find are two pieces of dried out pizza from the cafeteria. At first, they think the pizza is the product of some sort of satanic ritual. After they have it analyzed, they send it to the Board of Health to inspect the kitchen. <laughs> There are none of these experiences you can do right now. Please try again later. Hmm. You know what? What the hell? Let's go do some of this stuff. So, you guys remember the whole slash the tires thing? I'm going to completely bypass that one. There's some other ones I'm sure I'd like to do. You're driving on a deserted road when you begin to wonder just how fast the car will go. No. <laughs> no. Prestigious school fraternity. Lhasa Abso. Oh god damn! I hate Greek lettering. Lap. A <laughs> prestigious school fraternity. Lap is seeking new members. Pledges. Would you like to join? No. I went to fucking uh, high school and college. To fucking get an education and have fun on my own time, not to be someone's bitch. But there are lifelong, you know, things that you can establish in a fraternity, and there are like bonds you will form forever, and you always have friends and contacts, and you'll never be alone. Possibly true. I cannot speak from that, as I have not had those experiences. However, I'm not ignorant entirely, and I kind of know some of what happens based on how many friends I had in college who went to fraternities. I have an idea. But it's supposed to be super secret fraternity stuff and you're never supposed to tell anyone ever. 
Yeah. I know, I'm pretty boring. You were at your first rock concert with friends. Fuck yeah! Midway through the concert, someone passes you a joint and tells you it's okay to take some. No. Well, I'm at a rock concert. I have a job. No. Cindy Lewis is a girl you have had a crush on for a very long time. A friend of hers tells you that Cindy told her that all she dreams about is going out with you and being with you. There's only one problem. Cindy has a boyfriend and you are currently seeing someone. No. It is a hot summer night and your friends are drinking beer in the park down the street. One of them suggests a beer guzzling contest. No. In an attempt to win the heart of your latest love, you decide to write her a poem that will melt her very soul. You labor for hours and then reveal to her the product of your endeavor. <laughs> sure. The ocean whispered... Excuse me, I need to read this calmly and serenely. The ocean whispers softly. Of bringing you so near. I'd love to pick some flowers. This isn't going to rhyme with beer, is it? And... <laughs> and place them on your rear. <laughs> Oops, that's not it. You slipped. It was supposed to be, and place them in your chestnut hair. You must have had romance in your pants. <laughs> Instead of in your head. You get the old heave-ho. Damn. You're shopping in a men's clothing store. A pretty girl keeps looking over at you, whispering to her friend and smiling. Sure. You walk over to her, swaggering slightly, and introduce yourself. This is dumb. She eyes you up and down, stopping at all the strategic points along the way. What am I, a fucking battlefield here? Christ in heaven, we gotta fucking do war reenactments on my torso? <laughs> you know, I just had some thoughts pop into my head regarding war reenactments on my body. <laughs> Alter Ego, good selection for a game. She notes that you are a sharp dresser. She mentions that she needs to buy a present for someone just about your size and wonders whether you would consider trying on a pair of pants so she can make a decision. I'm a nice guy. I got some time to kill. Why not hang out with some ladies? Ladies. Reluctantly, you try on the pants. She probably has a boyfriend. Whatever. She certainly does. Thanks for the help. I'm generous. Physical social has plummeted to 44 on account of me not hanging out with anyone. My calmness is... <laughs> you and your friend are roughhousing near the stairwell at school. Your friend is much bigger than you are. He holds you up over the stairwell and threatens to drop you down. No. You are out with your friends and neglect to keep track of time. You are three hours past curfew. Sure. You arrive home and notice that all of the lights are off. Maybe everyone is sleeping and they won't notice you sneaking in. This is a trap. You fish around for your keys while standing at the door. The door opens. God damn it. Squeak! No one seems to... No. Just... <laughs> you take off your shoes and tiptoe toward the room. You're almost home free when at the trap you hear a noise. God damn it. It was just the pipes clanking. You sneak into your bedroom and no one is the wiser. Aha! There's a girls' pajama party at Pamela Gordon's house tonight. You and your friends plan an undercover pajama party crash. Sure. You rendezvous in Tommy's backyard at 9 o'clock sharp. You arrive at Pamela's house at approximately 9.30. You carefully check the floor plans drawn by Billy, a close friend of Pamela's brother, who has spent many afternoons over at her house. You know, I never did this, but I never had any friends propose this to me. 
Maybe I would have actually participated in high school. You proceed to the ground floor window identified as Pamela's room by the floor plans. The window is open a crack. The plan is to throw open the window, fire a quick barrage of water balloons, and beat a hasty retreat. Oh yeah. Ready? Set? Go! You lift open the window and hurl the balloons in. There is water everywhere. But it's a trap! <laughs> they have super soakers! Why don't you hear any screaming? God damn it, it's a trap! Either that or Billy or whatever is fucking retarded. Because that was Pamela's parents' bedroom! <laughs> You find out because Pamela's dad, who just happens to be a police officer, grabs you and three of your friends by the neck. Holy shit! What? How the fuck does he do that? What the, what the, what the fuck is... What? What? How the fuck do you do that? It's like fucking wrap around us. Like, you use like one fucking limb for each goddamn kid? God damn it, this fucking age, I should be just as fucking big as him. You can't grab all of us by the neck. I don't care how motherfucking badass of a police officer you are. You fucking like spread out and find your goddamn hands. Jesus. Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> Let's continue. Your friends decide to eat a large meal at a diner and sneak out without paying. No, we didn't. You decide that you would like to try out for your school's baseball team. Not quite realistic here, but you know, I think baseball would be interesting if I did actually play it. So sure, I think I have a higher physical rating in this game than what I did as a kid, so it's your turn at bat. The pitcher looks at you, looks away, chews twice, and spits. He winds up, the ball streaks towards you, and lands in the dirt, ball one. Next pitch is high and away, ball two. The next pitch is a fastball, a fastball right down the pipe. You bring the bat back. You swing. The breeze from your bat knocks the left fielder's cap off. Strike one. The next pitch nicks the corner of the plate. A called strike. Boo. The count is two and two. The next pitch is low and inside. A full count. Oh, shit. You prepare for the payoff pitch. The pitcher winds up and pitches... The ball sails toward the plate. You focus on it with incredible concentration. It looks like it's going to be a strike. You've got a swing. Here it goes. Whiff! Strike three! Out oh, so well. There's always basketball. Damn it. You and a bunch of friends decide that it might be a good idea to try skydiving. Sure. You pay your money and take your lesson. The man who runs the place has an extremely large belly, smokes a cigar, and has alcohol on his breath. <laughs> no. We are stopping that right there. I don't even want to see any more of that. Hmm. Okay, how old am I? 18. And I know what I want. Well, no more high school things. No more of those things. What do we have here? It's time for the senior prom. No. Alright, so we pretty much taken care of everything here. I know, junior and senior prom, I skipped those. Totally. It's what I did in real life, and while, you know, I haven't been following everything accurately, yeah, I wasn't interested in going to those. Not my thing. Social skill has def- my social sphere has definitely fucking plummeted. On the other hand, you know, everything is pretty decent besides that. What, uh, 60 physical, 60 vocational... Everything else here except for happiness is calmness, of course. Ah, uh, so I guess we'll go deal with these things now. Eh. Um, meet someone, I reckon. Where would you like to meet this person? Uh... Just meet him in school. Whom would you like to meet? What? What? I... I... What? Let's 
Let's go ahead and pick Anne here. You've chosen to meet with Anne. Her characteristics may be described as follows. She is not very trustworthy. She is moderately gentle, not very calm or happy, but she is confident and attractive. Not very trustworthy, huh? <laughs> you know? You met Anne in biology class. You chose what you believe to be an appropriate time and place to ask for a date. Unfortunately, you don't have the social skills necessary to successfully convince the person that you are worth going out with. Ouch. 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 Guess I should have started asking for dates, you know, back when I had more of the social sphere, huh? Um, let's go ahead and try to meet somebody again, I guess. Uh, meet him near home? Let's try to meet Ruth. Ruth is moderately trustworthy, very gentle, very calm, but she's not happy or confident. Very attractive. You met Ruth down the block. Ah, oh, well. Uh, let's see here. Maybe if I tried to ask her out at school. I don't know. Just like doing anything to me, like terribly? No, it's just passing time. Um. Let's try. Mm, outside of school. Uh, let's try. Louise? Not very trustworthy, very gentle, moderately calm, not very happy. You met Louise while away on vacation. Ouch. I'm getting struck down repeatedly, children. But my, my social sphere appears to be increasing, so that's a good sign. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Let's go ahead and try to meet someone again. Uh, I'll go back for in school again. We'll go ahead and pick, uh... Marion. Very trustworthy... Uh, not very gentle, but she is calm and happy. Okay, isn't that lovely? So, I guess let's go out on a date. You and Marion are both thinking through your decisions about going to college. Marion wants to go to a college that has a strong pre-veterinary program. There are none in the area. Making that college would mean that she would need to travel a great distance. You wouldn't see each other for long periods of time. Which one of these things reflects your feelings on this? Mixed feelings. Your ambivalence pulls you in two directions at once. You want to please yourself by having Marion with you, and you want to please Marion by supporting her decision to go away to college. This is not something that you can work out in one short episode. It is a difficult problem to resolve. Think about it. Is it worth trying to tie Marion down close to you if it means the possibility that she'll resent you for it later on? I don't know. Marion has just won an all-expenses-paid trip for two to a fantastic ski resort in Vermont. She has invited you to go along with her. There is only one problem. Marion's parents absolutely refuse to allow their daughter to take an overnight trip with any one of the opposite sex. What will you do? I tell Marion to stick up for herself, damn it. She's calm and confident, right? I've already forgotten her stats. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell her to go by herself and have a good time, and I'm not going to tell her that she's going, yeah, fuck that. Oh, what the hell. I'll have the talk. You've decided to confront them honest, honestly. Marion's dad appreciates this. He answers you with the same honesty. He doesn't trust you alone in the same room with his daughter. He thinks the two of you will have sex. You mentioned that if you wanted to have sex with his daughter, it would be much easier to go someplace closer to home, like a local motel. You are proud of yourself for winning points in the logic department. <laughs> Marion's dad says, very true, very too. True. Then gets a very sinister look on his face and continues. Just about the only difference, my friend, is that if you did something like that close to home and I found out about it, I would not be inconvenienced by having to travel far to find you and beat you to a pulp. That's nice. Even though your mother knows that you are currently dating someone, she candidly asks if you have ever considered dating her friend's daughter, Gina. What do you think of this suggestion? Uh, I'm gonna tell my mom that I appreciate that she's looking for me, but no thanks. Very sensitive response. Are you always like this? Yes. Oh, you must really be very healthy. <laughs> I am always sensitive. <laughs> 
That's a lie. <laughs> My happiness. Sigh. So unhappy. Marion has spent the afternoon with her parents, visiting friends of the family. When you see Marion, she can't stop talking about John, their son. When Marion and John were younger, everyone joked about how nice it would be if they married when they got older. Isn't that cute? Anyway, Marion goes on to tell you that John grew up to be an absolute honk with the cutest set of dimples on his cheek. After she finishes her detailed description, she squeals, He looked like just one of those calendar models. I could have died. How do you feel about all this? Bit threatened? I'm not going to say fine, no problem, because that's, that's fucking ridiculous. That's understandable, but from what I understand of Marion, she's a trustworthy person. She's just expressing that he is attractive, and that's probably all. Yeah. Still. There is a new guy in school. His name is Chet Clark. He's built like a linebacker and has handsome, rugged, good looks. Two weeks after he arrives at school, he has made every major sports team. Jesus! A friend informs you that yesterday, Chet asked Marion for a date. How do you feel about this? Hmm, no big deal. I trust her. Oops. Oops. Um, guess you guys got to be quick on the pause trigger there. Let's see. Ouch. I am unattached. Damn. I thought she was trustworthy. Guess not. What? <laughs> well, I guess that's lying to then. You and Marion have spent the evening watching television upstairs in your room. Yeah, you know, I thought she was trustworthy, so I could trust her with that. It's a quiet night, and the two of you snuggle in each other's arms and begin to nap. You are disturbed from your peaceful sleep by the sound of birds chirping outside the window. You open your eyes and realize you have fallen asleep for six hours. It's 4.37 a.m. Marion's father would have a fit if he ever caught you bringing his daughter home this late. What will you do? I will go over to Marion's house and face the music. You are ready for a bit of lecturing, but instead you get an entire study-at-home combination course on ethics, morals, responsibility, and the importance to your life of maintaining the purity and integrity of his daughter. When he is finished, you wish him a good morning, go home, and cook yourself breakfast. What a night. Oh my god, has this not ended yet? Jesus. <laughs> Been recording for so long. Camtasia's probably gonna crash in compiling this. <laughs> Still, we must soldier on. You and Marion have just had a nice romantic date. You have treated her very you treated her well all evening. Movies, a bite to eat, the works. By the way, now that I'm thinking of Mary, I'm thinking of Francis Mary and the Swamp Fox, famous uh, guy in uh, South Carolina during the American Revolution, uh, thwarted uh, British troops. Anyway, now you are feeling very romantic, but for some strange reason, Marion only wants to engage in idle chit-chat. Every time you try to kiss her, she turns her face away and says, let's just talk. How do you feel? Frustrated. What you do as a result of your frustration, express it. Since she wants to talk, I'll just express my frustration then. Expressing your frustration keeps you from acting on your feelings in an inappropriate way. Still, she doesn't feel like doing anything. Talking about your feelings doesn't always change the way things are. At least you made your needs understood in a direct way. It's cool. Um. Okay, so go steady. Okay, so... Um... What the fuck do I do? Um... <coughs> I guess I'll access this event. In your own opinion, you've been doing a good job at work. Your boss, however, constantly complains about the pickiest things. He never tells you when you have done a good job. Whatever. I'll listen quietly. You must be trying to tune your boss out. He sees you are doing this and becomes infuriated. You're fired. <laughs> and on that note, we end this fucking phase of life. Jesus Christ. 
Oh, it's great. <laughs> Finally leave my teenage years and I get fired during that same fucking card. Maybe I had to complete that in order to get through the phase. I'm not sure. Maybe the game was just taking its sweet ass time. Again, I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> so it looked like I was supposed to be anxious there. Damn. Oh, well. I got a lot more money about it now. You guys, you're purist or whatever, you were angry about me loading the game. You can cheer up, because I still got fired anyway. You had just passed through the adolescence phase of life. Family life can be very rough during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one wants you to let you have the freedom to do what you want. Judging by your progress through life so far, your family life has been quiet and good, all things considered. Family members can be pains, but no one seems to mind it when you overhaul your hair for three hours every morning in the bathroom. Excuse me. Physically, you have been not very healthy. Socially, this phase of life does present its own share of problems. Most of these problems fall into the category of girls. Life must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Your social adjustment to this phase of life has been good. Although you do not have a steady girlfriend at the present time, there's always a next life phase. So, I pretty much, like, in order to pass through enough time, I pretty much, I guess I do have to, like, go through social interactions with girls. Damn. Now, regarding your emotional development, you are a remarkable, tr remarkably trustworthy young man. This trait is bound to take you far, emotionally and vocationally. You're developing into the type of adult that people can confide in. Unfortunately, the burden that comes along with this characteristic is the tendency for people to tell you their problems. A positive aspect of your adolescence is your ability to resist temptation and not give in to your impulses. Since adolescence is a time for testing limits, this can get some people into some pretty dangerous situations. On the other hand, leading too much of a sheltered life can be boring. You're taking life pretty seriously, aren't you? Of course. While you are far from depressed, it sometimes seems that you don't always strive to be the happiest person you can be. Yeah. Even though an occasional explosive outburst is common to most adolescents, you seem to have everything well under control. You seem to be sensitive and gentle, because that's totally me. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You're not only book smart, you also have plenty of common sense. Totally true. Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time to be hurled out there into the abyss of the real world. I'll bet you didn't know that everything you did so far was part of the fake world. Welcome to young adulthood. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Proverbs 13.19 Oh my god. Uh, I am so wiped out right now. I am so physically drained after that. That was almost two hours of footage that I highly doubt will be fucking preserved. What time is it? Jesus fucking Christ. I was thinking of recording something else today. Like, maybe some sim and Jesus, I got nothing. I got fucking nothing. My throat is hoarse. Oh, my God. Uh... 19 years old, I guess that's what needed to happen. I needed to turn 19. <laughs> so I lost my job over that. You know, I'm okay with that. It'll be fine. I was supposed to lose it anyway, right, children? So spheres are looking pretty good here. I'm not below 50% in any of them. I managed to increase my social sphere with a bit of female interaction. <laughs> the only thing that's bad here is calmness. I am less calm than what I was when I entered the sphere, and that's saying a whole lot since I wasn't that calm at all. On the bright side, everything else though is looking pretty good. Oh my god. You're goddamn right I'm not fucking calm. You wanna know why? <laughs> if you watch the entire two hours, not listen to, watch. Congratulations. You won. <laughs> <laughs> My desk feels so good right now. Oh. <laughs> okay, everyone. <laughs> time to observe. Time to uh, put on my mantle of professionalism again. Then I guess. Next time. Let's get on with it. 
I don't want there to be a next time. Why is this game taking so long? <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> ah. This only would have taken half as much time if I didn't devote myself to reading out every fucking question. And I'm sure I would have saved like five minutes if I didn't go back and load any of the saves. What happened? I still lost my job. And I wasn't even confident about it because I just didn't care. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Alright, that's enough bitching. We're done here, everybody. We are so fucking done. I'm gonna kill myself. Bye!